The semi-auto, you have to stay engaged with the rifle a little bit longer and you can't come up. There's a lot of people who think this is the stop button. They press and they're done. They disengage. It's over. This is the start button. This turns the machine on versus turning it off. Lining up the shot, getting everything ready. The brake is the on button, not the off. We're doing all that other stuff and some people, you'll see it when they hold their breath a lot. They're like, oh, and that's what they're doing and they're completely disengaging from the rifle. You gotta stay engaged, you gotta stay on it. Sniper's Hyde here with an online training lesson. Question came in about trigger control and the difference between shooting a semi-automatic and a bolt action rifle specifically when it pertains to trigger control. Now the big thing right off the bat is the recoils with the semi-auto and I'm gonna do some demonstrations in a minute but we just want to talk about the semi-auto. When you go and we get on the trigger rifle fires and you're gonna have your normal recoil but at the same time the rifle is gonna unload it's gonna reload and that's a lot of mass coming forward so that's why that follow-through is such a key point with a semi-auto then you'll hear it in my videos I release and reset the trigger now I can fire again rifle will unload reload reset now there's varying degrees of speed in which you can do this the three gun guys are resetting on recoil as the rifle is recoiling they're using that mass to their advantage in a precision rifle scenario I'm hesitating I'm gonna go and fire I'm gonna let the rifle unload reload I'm back on target I'm good and then I'm gonna reset I want to minimize my movements with the semi-auto because the rifle is moving what you're gaining with the semi-automatic is efficiency you don't have to come off the rifle to run the bolt you stay on the trigger it's a little tiny bit of movement here boom just like that so here we have our JP rifle and we're gonna talk trigger control I'm gonna marry up to the trigger and still have that 90 this has the Tom Fuller trigger shoe that rolls so it's there to keep your fingers straight so you don't push bolt action same trigger position now how this thumb goes, a lot of people, I'll come across, some people will run it on here, some people will float it, but your trigger position is the same. So you have that same 90 degree trigger, I'm going to break, I'm still going to hesitate, then the difference is I'm going to come up, I'm going to run the bolt, come back down and get my hand position, fire, come up, run the bolt, back down, fire. As you can see with these fingers, these th three fingers here are what bring the rifle straight back into the shoulder pocket. You want a 90 degree trigger finger just like that. And then, you know, how your size of your hand is going to depend on that. But then it's break, reload, break, reload. In the shoulder pocket that I'm using to support the back of the rifle find my target okay bolt same 90 degree trigger finger back into the shoulder pocket one recoil Here's the thing with a semi-auto, because of that movement in the system, 
it's gonna exploit your weaknesses. As well, we have a completely different trigger design in terms of the hammer. This releases the sear and the firing pin. This is gonna release that hammer is gonna come up and strike the firing pin. So you're looking at, you know, eight to 12 milliseconds with a semi-auto and about four milliseconds with a bolt action. That is why you have to follow through with it. So what you're doing is it takes that little bit of extra for the hammer to come up and hit the firing pin, then the firing pin to move forward, hit the primer, and to start the machine in motion. Impact. Yeah. All impact. <laughs> That's a hit, uh, low right on the target. Third round hit, 1,125 yards. That hit, uh, low, on the target, impact. Impact. <laughs> 